This YouTube video covers part three of the motion slide set for physical science. If you haven't seen parts one and two, please return to those first and proceed to part three. As an example problem, let's consider a fairly common phenomenon in this part of the world. Imagine you're on a straight two-lane highway, moving west at a speed of 100 kilometers per hour. To get past a truck you've been following for the past 25 kilometers, you step on the gas. In eight seconds, you're moving at 140 kilometers per hour. What was your acceleration? So again, it's important when you read these problems to identify what you've been given and what you actually need. What we need is clear here. What was your acceleration? But let's fish out what we were given. We have this distance in the problem of 25 kilometers. We have an initial velocity of 100 kilometers per hour. We have a final velocity of 140 kilometers per hour. And our interval of time is 8 seconds. Let's look at our relationship for acceleration and see what we can use. Here it is. The acceleration is equal to the difference in velocity over the difference in time. That means final velocity less the initial velocity. So we have those two numbers. We plug those in, keeping the units 140 kilometers per hour minus 100 kilometers per hour over the eight second interval. And that solves to 5.0 kilometers per hour per second. Make sure you keep track of the units. They're important. Can you pick out anything inaccurate or incorrect about the statement? Well, it's not obvious, but perhaps you realize that acceleration is not an instantaneous deal. Try passing a big truck in an underpowered car, and you certainly feel the lack of acceleration initially that has to be overcome with time. So we're sort of cheating in that regard. Also, the time units are kind of odd. We're in kilometers per hour per second. Hours and seconds? They could be the same thing, but we'd have to convert it to kilometers per second squared. Well, can we do that? Definitely. We need a conversion factor. When we multiply our answer, 5 kilometers per hours per second, which can be written the way it is in front, Multiply by the conversion factor, which is 1 divided by 3600. That's one hour for every 3600 seconds. When you multiply the two together, the hours cancel out. Notice how hours is in the denominator in the first term and the numerator in the second term. That resolves us to kilometers per second per second or kilometers per second squared. That's why keeping track of the units is important. Our final answer numerically is 1.4 times 10 to the minus 3 kilometers per second squared. If you wrote that number out, it would be 0 0.0014 kilometers per second squared. And that's a small number. So in some regards, we might want to keep the odd units because they relate more to a phenomenon we can measure in an automobile. Another thing I should point out is kilometers over second squared can be written out as kilometers times seconds to the minus two. It's the same thing. The minus sign tells you that you're in the denominator. Let's ask another question. Imagine you're in a traffic engineering class and to get some data to report to your professor, you're going to set up some non-fancy equipment on a highway on-ramp and observe three cars as they uh, attempt to uh, merge onto the highway. So let's look at our three drivers. Their data is in the lower left corner. You note their initial speed. And driver one is at 50 kilometers per hour when he starts out. After two seconds, no change. Four, six, eight, and ten, all 50 kilometers per hour. Let's move over to driver two. Let's say that her initial speed is 60 kilometers per hour. And then after two seconds is 80 kilometers per hour. Four seconds is 90 kilometers per hour. Six seconds is 100 kilometers per hour. 110 at eight seconds and 120 at 10 seconds. And finally, driver three. 
Driver 3 starts off at 50 kilometers per hour. And over the course of the 4, 6, 8, and 10 seconds, increases in velocity, which we can see here, through 55, 60, 65, 68, and 70. So questions we can ask is, what's the average acceleration of driver number one? What is the acceleration of driver number two during the first two seconds? What is the acceleration of driver number three between six and eight seconds? And what's the average acceleration of each driver over the entire 10 period, second period during which you monitored the speed? I've graphed the data below, and that's a great way to look at it. Again, time is on our x-axis, that makes sense, and our velocity changes are on the y-axis, so we can map them out over time intervals. We're going to take the initial finding as 0 seconds, and then each data point is 2 seconds along the time scale. Let's look at driver 1. Driver 1 was 50 kilometers per hour at 0 seconds, and that didn't change over the entire interval. So we have a flat line, horizontal line, no slope to it at all. And that's because the data are all the same. Let's look at driver number two. Driver number two is the upper curve. This one right here. Driver number two has the greatest changes in velocity, starting faster at 60 kilometers per hour and then increasing until a total of 120 kilometers per hour at the 10 second mark. And driver three is somewhere in between starts at the same velocity as driver one, and then increases at a much slower rate to the 10 second interval. Let's go to our questions. What's the average acceleration of driver number one? Well, is there any change in velocity over the time? No. Velocity final minus velocity initial is 50 minus 50 kilometers per hour, and that means we get a big fat zero for acceleration for driver number one. What's the acceleration of driver number two during the first two seconds? Well, the acceleration is a change in velocity from 60 to 80 kilometers per hour. That's a change of 20 kilometers per hour. And that's over a two second interval. That makes our acceleration 20 divided by two kilometers per hour per second. In other words, 10 kilometers per hour per second. What's the acceleration of driver number three between the six and eight second data points? Driver number three increases from 65 to 68 kilometers per hour over the two second interval. That's a change of three kilometers per hour for the two seconds or three over two kilometers per hour per second, otherwise known as 1.5 kilometers per hour per second. And then what's the average acceleration of each driver over the 10 second period? Well, we already solved driver one, it's zero. Driver number two, the final velocity is 120 and the initial velocity is 60 kilometers per hour. That's a total change of 60 kilometers per hour over a 10 second interval, otherwise known as six kilometers per hour per second. And then finally, driver number three changes from 50 kilometers per hour to 70 kilometers per hour. That's a 20 kilometer per hour change over the 10 second interval. And the average acceleration is therefore two kilometers per hour per second. Could you resolve that into kilometers per second squared? Yes, use the conversion factor we saw on the previous slide. Okay, well let's sum up some facts about acceleration that we've learned thus far. Really, if we think carefully about uh, acceleration and maybe one of the common ways we experience it is in an automobile, there are really three accelerators in every car. The pedal, or what is known as the accelerator. The brake, because decelerations or negative accelerations are also accelerations. And the steering wheel, because a change in a direction is also an acceleration. All three are accelerations because the term refers to any change in the velocity vector of an object. Equations can be rearranged to suit a specific need. So we already learned that accelerations are equal to changes in velocity over time. And of course, a change in velocity is a final velocity minus an initial velocity over our time interval. 
Fortunately for us, we can solve that out. If we're interested in the final velocity, we want to know where we're going to end up with. All we need to know is the initial velocity, and then we need to add the acceleration times the time interval, and we'll find the final velocity. More on that later. Keep in mind, too, that we're using units of velocity per time, and velocity was defined as displacement per time, so now we're displacement per time per time. And in SI units, that means meters per second per second, or more simply written, meters per second squared, or as it's written here, meters times second to the negative two. All of this means the same thing. Get comfortable with meters per second squared. It's going to be very important in future slide sets.